Hi everyone, this is the lecture number four and here we will continue what we started in lecture number three about the behavior of interest rate. In case of supply, this is already affected by three main factors. Expected profitability. When the expected profit is high, this will encourage companies to borrow by issuing bonds to finance this new investment. If expected inflation is high, so that the real cost of borrowing is very low, and this will encourage the firm or government to issue more bonds. In case of government budget, if the government budget deficit increased, it will be financed by issuing new bonds, which means in all of these cases, there is a positive relationship. This is clear in this slide, where profitability, expected inflation, government deficit, all of them increased, so that supply increased. And for this, the supply is moved to the right, represented by red lines. Here we have an example for movement in bonds market for supply and demand. First, there is a rise in expected inflation, which shifted the bond demand curve leftward, which means decrease in demand. At the same time, there is a shift in bond supply curve to the right, could be according to one of the three reasons mentioned before. And finally, the equilibrium will shift from point 0.1 to point 0.2 where there is decrease in the price and for sure in this case interest rate will increase according to inverse relationship According to the Keynesian model, there should be an equilibrium in all markets at the same time. All markets here means money markets and bond markets. If there is any balance, so that supply side for bonds and money should equal demand side for bonds and money and in this case if there is any disequilibrium in any one of these two markets will affect the equilibrium in the other markets as we can see in the second equation where the difference between bond supply and bond is demand reflected in the size of the difference between money supply and money demand. But in case of there is equilibrium in money market between money supply and money demand and bond is supply and bond is demand, so there is equilibrium in the whole of this market. If you're looking for equilibrium in money market, central bank will determine alone the money supply. And for this reason, we can see that MS money supply is vertical at 300, while 
money demand is negatively sloped. The equilibrium at point C, where interest is 15%. And the quantity demanded and the quantity supplied there are equal at 300. If interest is higher than 15, like 25%, supply will exceed demand. And this will push the price. Here it is interest rate to decrease. While in case that interest rate is very low at 5% for example in this case demand will be greater than supply which is already pushing the price again in this case it is the interest rate to increase and retaining back to equilibrium at point C where interest rate is 15% and quantity of money is 300 billions of dollars. There could be a change in equilibrium in case of interest rate under the equity preference framework which means the Keynesian analysis or Keynesian model shifts in demand for money could be affected by two effects income effect and the price level effect income effects mean that a higher level of income causes the demand for money at each interest rate to increase and the demand curve in this case for sure will be shifted to the right to represent an increase In addition, price level effect means a rise in the price level causes the demand for money at each interest rate to increase and the demand curve will shift to the right. The reason behind this is increase in the price level means that you need more money to purchase the same amount of goods and services you already accustomed to purchase before. The previous two reasons could affect the demand for money. And for sure, both of them have positive relationship with demand for money. But what could affect the money supply under liquidity preference framework or Keynesian model. First we know that money supply only controlled by the central bank. No one else could affect it. In this case any increase in the money supply controlled and determined by the central bank which takes the name Federal Reserve System in case of USA and only could be shifted to the right in case that there is increase in money supply by the central bank and will be shifted to the left in case that there is decrease in money supply engineered by the Federal Reserve. Here we can see that what could happen if there is a change in the demand or in supply for the equilibrium in money market. Let's go one by one. In case one, if income increased, this will affect money demand. And it is expected that money demand will increase. The increase in money demand will shift it from MD1, the blue line, to the red one, MD2. And this shift will be to the right. 
and in this case interest rate will increase from I1 to I2 which means increasing demand for money will shift interest rate to a higher level and this is going with normal way of demand supply analysis again for price level if there is an increase in the price level this will shift money demand up which means again money demand increased this increase in money demand will shift it from the blue one MD1 to the red one MD2 which means we already shifted to the right as long as money supply is fixed so the interest rate will be higher it will be shifted up from I1 to I2 finally for money supply if the central bank or Federal Reserve System or Fed in case of America increasing the money supply so that MS1 the blue line will shift it to MS2 the red one which means this is shifted to the right in this case as long as the money supply increased and it is known that in case of increasing the supply of anything its price should decrease the price of money in this framework is the interest rate for this reason, the interest rate will be shifted down from I1 to I2. There is other cases could happen, like shifting demand and supply at the same time. And this is for sure easy, and you can do it by yourself to see different cases like normal demand and supply analysis this is the end of this lecture and thank you